Welcome back to another edition of the PegCast. I'm your host, Michael Pagani, joined alongside Windsor Spitfires forward Shane Wright. Shane, welcome to the PegCast. Thank you again for coming on. Yeah, thanks for having me on today. Uh, how have you been doing recently? I know you guys are on a bit of a hot streak right now. Uh, yeah, let's get into that. Yeah, I think uh, obviously only played three games here so far, but uh, it's been uh, it's been great so far. Nice being here at Windsor with the guys and uh, you know, finally getting settled here. And I um, think uh, you know three good games over the weekend, and we're you know we're uh, trying to uh, you know keep that going here this uh, this upcoming weekend. Your most recent game, let's get into that. You know, it was up against the London Knights, winning four one. With you recently joining the Spitfires, obviously there's that big rivalry between them and London. Uh, could you feel it right from puck drop? Yeah, it was definitely a pretty intense game. I think, uh, um, you know, we uh, we we wanted to beat them. They wanted to beat us. So it was uh, definitely a good rivalry, good game as well. And uh, definitely uh, nice to come out on top there. Getting into a bit of who you are and your story, uh, who influenced you to get into hockey? Uh, I'd say probably probably mainly my dad. I think he was uh, you know, the first guy to kind of put me into hockey and um, you know, kind of started me out with, uh, you know, learning the skate programs and, you know, bought me equipment and tied my skates and, uh, drove me the rink and all that kind of kind of stuff. So, uh, definitely say he had uh, you know probably biggest influence on on hockey for me. Was there a player who you wanted to model your game after growing up? Yeah, I mean, I always loved watching Crosby play. He was always my favorite player. He's always a guy I looked up to, and uh, you know, try to model you know myself after what he did and uh, his style of play and the you know the the way he plays the game. Um, you know, I still love watching him. Still, probably you know my favorite player uh, nowadays as well. Do you find it crazy that you have the opportunity to line up against him? Yeah, yeah, it's pretty crazy, pretty surreal that uh, um, you know, I uh, I got the chance to do that. Um, definitely a pretty cool moment for me for sure, and definitely uh, uh, something really special. Did you guys exchange any words pregame, or was it just you were just so dialed in? No, I didn't uh, didn't talk to him at all. No. Growing up in Burlington, which is actually my hometown, so it's awesome. I uh, did you grow up a Leafs fan? Not really, no. I was I was a Penguins fan because of Crosby, so um, wasn't wasn't really a Leafs fan at all. Well, at no. least that saved you from the heartbreak, right? <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah. Getting into your career here, uh, how did the Burlington Eagles help with your development? Yeah, I think uh, you no, know, I had a lot of good years there. Um, you know, it was obviously where I started playing, you know, rep hockey for the first time. Really, uh, um, you started to you know, develop myself as a player and develop my game and, um, you know, met a lot of good people there and built a lot of good relationships. So uh, definitely, uh, you know, really enjoyed my time there. Let's get on to that Don Mills Flyers team. I mean, everyone knows it was so stacked. Brent Clark, Roman Schmidt, Brendan Ottman, just to name a few, obviously you as well. Uh, at what point during that season did you guys realize you would go all the way and win? Um, I wouldn't say there's one point uh, specifically. I think, you know, kind of the whole year, uh, you know, we knew we had a good team. We knew we had a, you know, a, a solid roster and, uh, you know, we believed in ourselves, believed in, you know, our abilities and, uh, you know, what we could do as a team. So um, I wouldn't say there's really, uh, you know, one uh, one moment where that, that kind of uh, kicked in for us. Now that season, obviously you scored 150 points. You were granted exceptional status. Uh, you're under the microscope for basically your entire career ever since you were 15. Uh, how did you make sure that your play didn't get affected because of that? Yeah, I just tried to focus on going out and playing hockey. Uh, not try to worry about what was going on around me or, you know, what people were saying or writing or tweeting or whatever it was, just kind of uh, go be myself, just play hockey, go be you know, a good teammate and do all the things that, that I usually do. And, uh, and you'll go have some fun while I'm doing it. What did it mean for you to get, you know, granted exceptional status to be the John Tavares, that Connor McDavid type player? Yeah, obviously pretty special, you know, getting a, getting a distinct honor like that. Something that, uh, you know, they don't really just hand out to anyone is, uh, you know, obviously really cool for me, really special moment. And, I'm um, definitely uh, you know, pretty proud of that for sure. Your first season in the OHL was in 2019-20. Uh, what do you remember most about that season? Yeah, I remember learning a lot. It was definitely uh, uh, no big jump for me, obviously, from uh, from minor hockey into junior hockey. It was to, it's a big adjustment at the, at the start, but I um, felt like uh, you know, I really uh, um, you know, adjusted well at the start and, and, and you know, kind of settled into rhythm there and uh, you know, started playing well. And uh, uh, um, yeah, definitely really happy with uh, with how that year went. What do you remember from the OHO draft day? Obviously, getting selected first overall is such a huge honor. Yeah, uh, I think uh, just obviously the the honor uh, of getting drafted first is pretty special. I think uh, um, anytime you're uh, you're the guy drafted first, or the guy uh, you know take with the first pick, it's uh, it's pretty cool. Definitely a huge honor and uh, you know pretty special moment for me. 
And it, and obviously you lived up to the expectations. You got named assistant captain in your first season. What did that mean for you to be part of that leadership group? Yeah, that's obviously uh, you know a really special honor for me as well. Obviously, you know being a leader, you have a lot of responsibilities. You got to make sure you're um, you're leading by exampling with your work ethic and habits. And um, definitely, uh, you know, pretty proud to be recognized by my coaches and, and teammates in that way. Did you get nervous at all? Uh, not really. No. Um, no, I just tried to, you know, I guess that's, that's kind of how I've always been. I've always, you know, see myself as more as, as a leader and, uh, a guy who's kind of a, a role model leads by example. So, um, I wouldn't say I was, I was nervous at all for that. No. So let's talk about the first time you represented Canada at the U17s. Uh, what did that mean for you to don the Canadian Jersey? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely really special. You know, anytime you can, uh, you know, wear the Canadian Jersey and represent your country and, um, you know, uh, on the world stage against the world's best competition is is always a pretty cool moment, really special for me, for sure. It's such a short tournament. So how hard was it to build chemistry with your line mates? Yeah, it was, uh, it's definitely tough in a short-term competition. You have to really uh, um, develop those bonds as fast as you can, develop that chemistry and culture in the room. And um, you know, I was lucky enough to know a couple of guys, you know, beforehand going into that team, but that's always, uh, you know, a, a difficulty when it comes to, you know, those short-term tournaments like that. Now, the pandemic was huge for all the O3s in entering the NHL draft, and people adapted in different ways. How did you adjust your workouts, whether it's on ice or off ice? Yeah, I think uh, just find different ways to and to you know improve your game and find uh, you know little things you can do you know, every single day to get better was was what I kind of did or, or tried to do. And um, obviously, with you know a lot of uncertainty with you know with whether gyms and rinks were open and you know whether the season was starting and all that, so. Just tried to, um, you know, do whatever I can on my own or with other guys to, you know, kind of work on my game that way. Was there any frustration from your side of things when the OHL kind of had plans to start a season, but then they didn't have a season? Like, what were your whole thoughts on that situation? Yeah, it was definitely annoying. Obviously, uh, uh, anytime the season gets canceled like that, it's not, you know, it's not something you you want to happen. It's not something that that really, uh, you know, that you enjoy happening and. Um, definitely sucked for me definitely sucked for a lot of guys as well and um, wasn't uh, wasn't a lot of fun for sure but the only time you really got to showcase your skills were at the U18s what was your mentality entering that tournament yeah I think just just not take it for granted Um, you know go enjoy every second of that tournament really kind of soak it all in you know like you said it was the only really competitive hockey they had that season so I think uh, you know my mindset was, was was just to take advantage of all this uh, the opportunity just to play and uh, enjoy myself and showcase myself in that way. Because wasn't that good? Like, wasn't that first game of that tournament kind of like your first competitive hockey game in over almost like a year and a half, it seemed like? Yeah, yeah, it was, yeah. So it's almost like, oh my God, how do I play hockey? Do I still have the same skills, you know? It's like, you don't want to have all this rust, especially when the, you're under the microscope. A little bit, yeah. I think um, uh, I, I didn't feel like I was, you know, too rusty at all. I think that's credit to the work I put in before that, all the training I had the leading up to the tournament, but um, obviously, you know, after taking that much time off for, for competitive hockey, it's going to be a bit of a, an adjustment at the start, but yeah. The gold medal of that U18 game was Canada versus Russia. What does it mean to be a part of that rivalry? Yeah, it's always a big rivalry. It always, had, always has been for a number of years, going back to, you know, even the Summit Series and uh, stuff like that. So it's always uh Always a huge rivalry, always really fun to play in, and uh, definitely nice to come out on top on that one. What was the game plan going into that gold medal game? I assume a lot of it had to be surrounded around Matt Vey Mishkov. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, we we knew we were a good team. We knew we had a uh, you know, really good roster. We knew they were a good team as well. So um, we're just trying to do our thing, just trying to play our game and, um, you know, just, just do what we do best, not try to, um, uh, you know, be anyone or not or trying to do anything too crazy. But, um, you know, we, we were confident ourselves, confident our abilities and, uh, just tried to, you know, let the, let ourselves do the rest there. So you actually did get a complete OHL season in, in 21, 22, you know, it's kind of crazy to look back because at the start <laughs> we had no fans and then, you know, they opened up the arenas. We had some rescheduled games, some postponements, and we still got a winner out of it. Don't you think it's kind of crazy that we got a full season there? Uh, a little bit. Yeah. But I think, um, you know, after the year before being fully canceled, I think, um, they definitely had to, uh, you know, figure out ways to, uh, you know, improvise and, uh, you know, kind of figure out a full season, figure out how to uh, comp- accomplish that and kind of get it all all together. So, 
um, definitely, uh, you know, it was definitely nice that, you know, they were able to, to, you know, kind of complete the whole season. You played in 11 playoff games that season. Uh, did you feel the ice was getting smaller? I mean, like, yeah, you, you only had split second decisions. Yeah, I think, uh, that's always what playoff hockey is. It's, uh, it's tight, hard checking games and it's tough to, you know, create chance, tough to create offense. And, um, you know, guys are, are compete really hard to win. Um, you know, you want to win every game and, um, you know, it could be as hard as you can. So it's definitely, uh, um, you know, tougher hockey games. That's for sure. Do you have any playoff superstitions? Uh, not really. No. How did you find out that the first World Juniors that you played in were going to get canceled? Um. Yeah. They just the the, the staff just kind of called everyone down to to the meal room and um you know just kind of told us all that you know because of their co- couple of cases going on around the tournament just um that you know the tournament was going to be canceled there. And it really sucked because you guys had a lot of momentum going for you. We obviously saw, you know, Connor Bedard st- truly magnificent performance that uh, that time around. Um, and then you had a lot of great games as well. And it just sucks that it got canceled there. Yeah, yeah, that d- definitely sucked. Definitely, uh, uh, you know, disappointed that it was shut down for sure. Yeah. Looking back at the NHL draft, was there one team's interview that was just the strangest? Uh, I don't think so. No, none were really, really strange for me. Nothing really stood out as being, you know, that was a weird question or anything like that, but um, yeah. Getting drafted to Seattle is such a treat, you know, since they already have Maddie Beneers and now they draft you. Uh, Maddie Beneers looks to be the, you know, Calder for the, uh, or the favorite for the Calder there. It must be nice to get drafted to a team who has a center core that's established for the next 10 years. Yeah, I think uh, it's, it's definitely nice. Um obviously new opportunity new team and uh you know coming to a new situation and uh you know being able to earn my spot be able to earn uh, you know my place in that team and um you know to kind of establish my, as myself as an NHL player is always uh, uh you know, a good thing for sure so far you've played eight games with the Kraken uh you know it seemed like you were a bit you know in and out of the lineup the fans weren't really sure what the entire plan was for you are you able to clarify what the plan was there for you yeah i, I mean I don't know, like, I didn't really even know the, the full plan personally myself. I was just kind of taking it one day, one game at a time and, um, you know, see what happens, see what, uh, you know, the coaches and one and the staff wanted to, wanted to do with me. And you also even played with the Coachella Valley Firebirds and you were on fire there, uh, four goals in five games. How did that help your confidence heading into the World Juniors? Yeah, it was definitely nice being down there, obviously, uh, be able to play those games, play a lot of minutes there build up the confidence was great and be able to score a few goals as well is always nice. But uh, that was uh, that was a fun couple of weeks for me and definitely uh, uh, you know, gained a lot of that time for sure. Well, let's get into the most recent World Juniors. Uh, the Boxing Day game against Czechia didn't go as planned. How did you use your leadership uh, skills to lead the team through that adversity? Yeah, I think uh, anytime there's you know short-term competition, you're going to face adversity. You're going to face you know tough times. You're always going to uh, be winning every single game and, and just kind of sweep the tournament. So um, you know, obviously it's, uh, not, 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 not really where you want to face adversity, but I think it's good for us that we face it early in that tournament. You know, we learn how to kind of respond from that, learn how to, uh, kind of bounce back. And that was, uh, you know, the main message I was telling the guys. What was the process behind the goal song selection? Yeah, I think, uh, we just kind of wanted a, uh, more of a maritime song, obviously with it being Halifax and Moncton there, we, uh, we wanted to kind of give credit to their fans and their, uh, their culture there with the kind of East Coast maritime song, so um, we uh, we ended up on 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 that one. Obviously, when the uh, you know it turned out well, the fans loved it. So yeah, it turned out well. And it's awesome just like seeing the smaller ring packed to the brim. Like we're talking standing room only. Yeah, I mean the fans were great. Uh, it was uh, uh, a really fun atmosphere. They were loud. They're cheering us on and uh, you know showing us lots of support. So um, one of the one of the loudest crowds I've played in front of this year and. Uh, in my entire life so it was definitely uh definitely a lot of fun for sure you've played in so many rivalries with the canadian jersey is there one game that sticks out the most um i wouldn't say it was one game i think uh maybe the uh maybe the semifinals against the u.s was was a pretty competitive game i think um obviously canada u.s is you know one of the biggest rivalries in the sports and, and hockey and um you know they don't like us we don't like them very much and uh, it's always a you know pretty intense game. It definitely was, uh, you know, for sure that 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 game there in the semifinals, and um, definitely nice to to come out with the win for sure. 
How about that game against Slovakia? Uh, it was very close there, a lot closer than what you know many Canadians had thought. Uh, what were the vibes in the locker room heading into that overtime frame? Yeah, they were fine. Uh, I mean, we we were confident ourselves. We knew we were we were the better team throughout the game. We knew we had you know a, a lot of you know great eight chances, and you know they, their goalie was hot. He was playing well, but um, you know we were comfortable. We weren't really you know nervous or overthinking or or too worried. You know we we were you know confident in ourselves and confident in our in our game and. Um, just wanted to, you know, trust each other and just go out there and, uh, you know, do our job. You've had so much firsthand experience watching Connor Bedard. Did his goal in overtime against Slovakia surprise you at all? Um, I wouldn't say it surprised me. I think that's just kind of what he does. You know, he uh, pulls out those, you know, incredible moves, incredible goals like that uh, all the time. He's always, uh, um, you know, he's a, he's a, he's a guy who stepped up in the big time there and. Um, obviously it's a credible goal, but, um, that, that's just kind of, you know, something that he does and, and, uh, yeah. Another incredible goal for the Canadians was obviously Dylan Gunther securing the gold medal in overtime. Uh, the team must've joked with him about him not taking off his gloves immediately. Right. Yeah. We, 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 uh, we chirped him a little bit for that. He said he was kind of, he kind of forgot it was overtime and that we had won the game and, uh, didn't know he could throw his gloves up, but yeah, we, uh, we, we chirped him a little bit for that. Yeah. It was just the most nonchalant celebration I've ever seen. It was it was actually kind of funny. Yeah, yeah, it was funny. Yeah. Uh, Scott Wheeler, who, um, you know, does a lot of draft prospect uh, coverage, he mentioned on Twitter that the arena was very warm. Would you, like, what was the ice conditions like that tournament? Yeah, ice wasn't very good all tournament. I think uh, it was definitely really warm in that arena, obviously with a lot of fans packed in the the same building and, um, you know, a couple of games a day on the same ice as well is, uh, is going to chew it up, you know, quite a bit. And um, definitely, uh, you know, wasn't the best ice, you know, throughout the whole tournament there. And it sucked because you guys were always the third and final game. Yeah. 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 Like I said, there with, uh, with two games being on before us, it's, um, you know, it just gets chewed up even more being the third game. It's, it's tough with it being, uh, you know, a couple hours in between games and stuff. So it's definitely uh, yeah, pretty chewed up there. When you returned home from the World Juniors, uh, was there a main factor behind you getting traded to the Spitfires? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, the, obviously their organization, their staff, um, you know, they're, they're, they've developed, you know, a pretty good roster as well this year. They have a really strong team, and that was, you know, a strong team enough to, to you know, go win a championship in Memorial Cup. That was definitely, a, you know, a big factor for me and as well. You know, they are, uh, um, you know, great head coach and GM there as well, and, uh, you know, the develop, you know, NHL players. And that's kind of, yeah, you know, the main reason is, you know, I want to obviously win this year, but also, you know, develop hopefully into an, uh, you know, full-time NHL player next year as well. You've stepped into an already great lineup, six points in three games. Can you speak to your confidence right now? Yeah, feeling good. I think, uh, you know, just want to come back here and, and enjoy myself and play hockey. I'm not trying to think too much, not trying to, uh, you know, worry too much or really, uh, um, you know, focus on, you know, scoring a lot every game or, or whatever that is, or, um, you know, doing too much, just kind of go play hockey and, and, and uh, don't enjoy myself here. Now, one question that just popped in my head, uh, do you find it kind of funny that some of the U18 team graduated to this current world junior team? Like there was some, there had to have been some sort of joke there, uh, team chemistry that was really well put on. Um, Yeah. I mean, obviously a lot of guys in the U18 team were, uh, were part of the world junior team there and, um yeah it's always nice to have those 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 previous bonds and relationships with all those guys i think that definitely uh you know helped you know for sure with, with our locker room and uh, the team chemistry overall it seemed like you guys were getting the band you know back together for one last ride and you guys did it you accomplished it a little bit yeah i think uh you know kind of what just what i said you know it's uh it's always nice having uh, those past bonds and you know playing with guys in the past and you know moving up through the ranks with all of them you and Oliver Pierre go all the way back to the Burlington Eagles days. It must be nice to finally catch up with him. Yeah, yeah, it's always nice, uh, you know, catch up with him. You know, I haven't played with him in a number of years, obviously, and uh, you know, played with him for a while in Burlington. But um, it was, uh, yeah, it was nice to be able to you know get to see him again. It's nice to be able to you know play with him again here. As we're closing off this interview here, do you have any advice for younger hockey players? <clears throat> Yeah, I think uh, you, know, you, you just got to enjoy the game. You got to love it. You got to love what you do. Um, you got to be really passionate about the game and uh, and work on your game and getting better as well. You know, if you don't love what you do, if you think, you know, this is work or, you know, I don't really want to, um, you know, I feel like I have to do this or have to work out or shoot pucks, whatever it is, then, 
uh, maybe it's not for you. So I think that's probably uh, uh, the biggest thing I'd say. Awesome. Well, I'd like to thank again, Shane Wright, for joining me on today's podcast. Thank you again, Shane. Yep. Thank you very much.